Welcome to Listworthy's summary explanation of the movie Tragedy Girls. So, Tragedy Girls is a comedy horror indie film that was released in 2017. It starts off on a pretty cliche note with two ripe for murdering teenagers necking in a car on a dark abandoned bridge. The girl stops mid makeout because she thinks she heard something outside and asks the guy to go check it out. The boy is like, nah, that's a bad idea, let's just drive away. The girl, displeased, very rudely calls his manhood into question. So, horniness and the possibility of coitus triumphs over good sense and the boy goes outside the car to investigate the noise. Predictably, less than a minute later, he is killed when a stranger emerges from the darkness and stabs him in the face with a big-ass knife. The girl screams in terror, drawing the killer's attention, and runs off into the woods. It looks like the killer is going to catch up to her, when in a refreshing twist of horror movie cliché, instead of the girl tripping over her own feet and getting caught by the killer, the killer is the one who trips over a wire and falls on his back. Turns out, The Wire was a trap set up by these two girls, Michaela and Sadie. After tasing him and knocking him out with a baseball bat, they take the killer to their secret lair and tie him to a chair. The girls introduce themselves and gush about how they are his biggest fans and are hoping he could be their murder mentor. The killer, Lowell Orson Lehman, is a huge disappointment to the girls because he refuses to mentor them and because he didn't successfully kill the boy Craig when he stabbed him in the face, forcing them to finish the job themselves. The girls, high school seniors Michaela Hooper and Sadie Cunningham, live in the midwestern town of Rosedale and run a true crime blog called Tragedy Girls and they are desperate to get more followers. So when Lehman refuses to aid them, they decide to keep him captive, commit the murders themselves, and use Lehman as a fall guy. The next day, they are disappointed when the police say that Craig is simply missing and presumes to have run away from home. This time, we firmly believe Craig has run away from home. No! I mean, how do you know? They attempt to drum up some views for their blog and convince people that there is a serial killer running loose but nobody pays them much attention and they only earn the ire of Jordan's father, Sheriff Welch. Oh, Jordan is this totally nice guy that does all the editing work for the girls' blog videos and has a huge crush on Sadie, which she reciprocates, but he is also hated by Michaela, who never wastes an opportunity to express her contempt for him. What's with you and that mama's boy anyway? Nothing. We're sort of friends. When Michaela's ex-boyfriend Toby amasses more Twitter followers than the girls, they become angry and jealous. He has so many more followers than we do and it's literally the same thing. What? When he refuses to give them a shout out on Twitter to help boost their popularity, they decide to kill him. Toby's death is unfortunately rude an accident, and the serial killings go unacknowledged, enraging and frustrating the girls in equal measures. On another day, the captain of the girls' cheerleading squad, Sil, offends Michaela by daring to tell her she cannot participate in practices without the proper footwear, and suggesting they cancel prom in light of all the tragedies that have struck their schoolmates. If we don't have prom, then the haters win still. Plus, we already made the deposit on the DJ. And that shit's non-refundable. After these offenses, they decide to kill Sil. But through some freak accident, Sil ends up dead before the girls even get their hands on her. That is some serious final destination shit. Damn it! This is still gonna look like an accident, again. To ensure that her death is ruled a homicide, the girls cut Seal's body into pieces and basically paint the school workshop red with her blood. Having been proven right about the serial killer, the girls start to get more views on their blog and they happily bask in all the attention they start to get. 
But at Seals Memorial, they have their thunder stolen by Big Al, a local hero figure and firefighter who vows to catch the killer. The girls are absolutely livid to have their moment stolen. So just like that, Big Al moves to the top of their murder list. Meanwhile, Lehman attempts to turn Michaela against Sadie by convincing her that Sadie will use her to do all the dirty work and then take all the credit for herself. The girls plot to kill Big Al while he works out at the gym, but Big Al fights back. The two only narrowly manage to stab him and decapitate him with a bench press. Later that night, Jordan visits Sadie at her home and reveals he has stolen the serial killer case files from his father's work computer. Mayor Campbell calls an emergency town meeting and Michaela and Sadie intentionally rile up the townspeople into turning against the local law enforcement by portraying them to be incompetent, which they totally are by the way. They hold a march in defiance of the killer. However, Lehman escapes and murders the mayor at the march. Jordan decides to stop editing the girls' videos in support of his father, and it causes him to fall out with Michaela and Sadie. An enraged Michaela discovers Jordan has stolen a phone belonging to her that has videos of all the murders and goads a reluctant Sadie into heading to Jordan's home and killing him. Jordan reveals to Sadie that he broke into the school and stole Michaela's psychological profile. He suspects her to be the killer. They are interrupted when Lehman breaks into the Welch residence and brutally stabs Jordan. Michaela, seeing everything from outside, alerts the sleeping Sheriff Welch by breaking his window. He drives Lehman off and saves Jordan. Sadie takes the opportunity to destroy Michaela's stolen phone as she calls an ambulance. Two weeks later, Sadie is publicly honored as a hero for defending Jordan against Lehman, but she does not acknowledge Michaela in her speech, causing the two to have a massive falling out. Well, I've never needed you. We don't need you. Some time passes, Sadie and Michaela are still on the outs. Sadie and Jordan are a couple, but Sadie already seems to have outgrown him and is just going about the motions in the relationship. Prom arrives and Sadie goes with Jordan as her date, while Michaela teams up with Lehman. After killing a teacher, Michaela confronts Sadie. We used to be the same you and I, she says sadly, but now you've changed. She then reminisces and recounts their first kill together when they murdered Jordan's mother as kids unaware that Jordan is listening from a hidden spot. Jordan attempts to flee from Michaela and Lehman with Sadie, but they get cornered. Lehman attempts to attack Sadie, but is stopped by Michaela, who shoots him dead. Hey, Michael Myers knock off! I told you, she's off limits! The girls reconcile, and Sadie turns on Jordan, hanging him to death and watching coldly as life leaves him. The two skip about the school happily and then chain lock the doors shut, start a fire in the gymnasium and watch as all 124 prom goers burn to death. They also watch with amusement as Jordan's father cries dejectedly for his son. Best night ever. <laughs> in the aftermath, Lehman is shown to have been blamed for the murders. Sheriff Welch devastated by his son's death, resigns from his position at the police to focus on charity work. Sadie and Michaela achieve the fame they always wanted. They get book and movie deals to tell their heroic story of surviving the Rosedale killer. They do interviews and then head off to college victoriously, completely getting away with all their murders. This movie was a fun watch. As advertised, it is a comedy horror and it delivered on both those fronts excellently. 
I especially appreciated how it focused more on the girls, their friendship, and their messed up story rather than gratuitous gore. I therefore awarded a watchability rating of 8.5 out of 10.